I'm Dr. Maria. For today, our topic is going to be flooding. We, those of us who are living in Southeast Asia, are having the monsoon season right now, which is uh, marked by increased humidity in the air and torrential rainfalls. So, it becomes a common problem when at times there is a rise in the water level and there is overflowing of this water onto land which is normally dry. What are the common causes? The very first cause, heavy rainfalls which may be sporadic causing flash floods or they may be more sustained but for a longer period of time causing the same flooding of land. Then this can cause the river uh, water level to rise up and overflow because of dam failures and then there can be coastal storms in which the seawater rises up and encroaches onto the lands which are located in the coastal belt. So what happens? What are the effects of this flooding? Due to this flooding, they may be lost to life, to property or to the infrastructure. Then they can be damaged to the crops and loss of livestock and then there can be health effects. There are different kinds of health effects that can come across with flooding starting sequentially would be first of all there may be cases of drowning then due to open wires and damaged electrical circuits there may be electric shocks and electrocutions then there can be injuries then there can be uh, the different health problems related to uh, waterborne diseases and airborne diseases especially due to dirty water they can be gastroenteritis, they can be cholera, they can be hepatitis and then they can be malaria and they can be dengue. So in our previous video we have already talked about uh, what is drowning in which there is a submersion of the nose and mouth in water or in liquid which makes us unable to breathe resulting in drowning and we have discussed what are the main points we are going to repeat right now but for details you can watch the other video. So what you have to do in case you get a case of drowning, first of all we try to pull the person towards dry land. We have to check for the vitals whether they are breathing and whether they have a heartbeat or not and then we start giving rescue breaths even if the land is not near. But as soon as we reach land, we have to lay down the person and give CPR and rescue breaths, the cardiopulmonary resuscitation in which we once again revise that there are 30 compressions and then 2 rescue breaths to the adults, 15 compressions and 2 rescue breaths to the infants and the toddlers. And then either we continue the process till we uh, get some help and first aid uh, people arrive or we see whether it is producing any effect or not. Then we lay the person down in recovery position and try to bring the temperature normal by covering them up in blankets or whatever is available. Next, we go on to electric shocks and electrocution. Now, during these rains, uh, many a times when there is flooding, the electric supply lines, they are open and they enter the water and the electric current starts flowing easily. And the people get electrocuted and this electrocution is actually fatal and brings on instant death due to muscle spasms and paralysis of the respiratory muscles and the heart rate is affected and there is instant death. But in many a case, if you are lucky enough, then the electric current passes through one's body and then moves out quickly, leaving us in a state of electric shock. What happens in that case? In that case, uh, we normally get very, very anxious, we get pale, we get calmy, and there is an increased heart rate, there is rapid breathing, and this later on leads to uh, spasms, muscle spasms, which may at times be so intense that they can either uh, break the bones, fracture the bones, or they can dislocate the joints. When these spasms reach the respiratory muscles, they paralyze them, then this electrical current interferes with the beating of the heart, the electrical uh, currents in the heart and the be beating becomes irregular and they can be instant dead. Then at times, uh, there can be burns which may just be external at the point wherever the electricity has entered the body and there may be internal burns also. So what do we do in all these cases? Well, there are even uh, cases in which the person has survived 
but the smaller capillaries they have been damaged by the passage of this electrical current which can later on results in uh, result in eye cataracts kidney problems and other damage uh, generalized damage to the muscular tissue throughout the body so what do we do in these electrocution cases first of all uh, we need to take general measures in which if we know that we are living in low-lying areas we need to uh, put some barriers at points from where the water can enter the house then we must check the earthing of the house in which the electrical equipments we have to check if there is any loose circuit there is open circuit or the earthing is improper which needs to be maintained before the uh, season starts the flooding season or the rainy season starts then we must keep supplies in the house we must keep uh, uh, some uh, uh, torches and some food items which are dry all these things have to be there what do we do as per the health problems <clears throat> you find a case of electric shock what are you going to do first of all we have to call for help and we need to uh, inform them that there is an emergency and they need to come over right away next we have to turn off the source of the electrical supply if it is possible third we have to take the precaution never to touch a person who is already exposed to an electric current do not touch at all we must wear rubber boots or rubber slippers and use some wooden sticks broomsticks wooden chairs stack of newspapers something that does not conduct electricity and try to separate that person from the source from where he got electrocuted then we lay down the person we have to raise the legs of the person the head and the uh, abdomen area the abdominal area the upper body can remain flat we have to check the vitals if the person is breathing or not and then we have to start giving cpr as we discussed with drought the same cpr rescue breaths and then we warm up the person by putting whatever we have then we see if there are any burns we have to uh, treat them they are already disinfected so we just cover them up and if there are any injuries then we have to see whether the injuries are bleeding injuries or they are the soft tissue injuries in case there are bleeding injuries we have to secure the loss of blood by any means whatever is available to us any cloth any dupatta any scarf any handkerchief whatever is available we have to secure that area so that the blood does not keep on flowing and there is blood loss and then if there are any fractures we have to immobilize the fractured area and wait for help then in case of soft tissue injuries where uh, there is swelling there is pain the very common thing that everyone has to remember is a simple word r i c e rice which means rest r for rest i for icing c for compressing the part and then e for elevating that part over your heart level this is going to help out the person and then of course medical help has to arrive if you have any painkillers you can give if the person is conscious then the other diseases uh, that can be related to the water uh, worn ones the ones due to dirty water in this we have already discussed uh, malaria we have discussed dengue we have discussed gastroenteritis uh, in our urdu videos and we will be coming up with them in the english videos one by one so that you can remember the little parts that we have taught right now this very uh, video uh, has been uh, added to a CPR and recovery position small video which can help you how to do those things once again although we did it in the previous one also so please go through it and uh, learn your basics learn your first aid save your life and save others lives too thank you have a nice day Allah Hafiz